Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, here in a Finnish early uh, World War II uniform, and we are going to take a look at the KVKK-62. This was introduced, as the name implies, in 1962, and this was the squad automatic weapon uh, counterpart to the RK-62, which was the Finnish version of the AK. So, these are very rarely seen outside Finland. It's very cool that we get to take a look at this one today. And I figured we'll take it apart here and then we'll do a little bit of shooting with it. So this is a belt-fed weapon. And a lot of it is similar in concept to the RPD, sort of. So we have a, a belt container, a pouch on the side. Uh, I don't know if this is actually compatible with the RPD. It's a very similar style of belt. Uh, holds a 100-round belt here in the pouch. And we have a uh, feed cover right there. So if you're going to shoot this, you would load the belt in like so. It is a push-through belt, meaning that the bolt just shoves a cartridge straight out the end of the belt into the chamber to fire. Now, for disassembly, we will go ahead and take that off. There's a little spring-loaded tab right here. If I push that in, I can then slide this pouch off. It's got a pair of rails. This is actually also rather similar to an RPD. So that comes off. Now, the gun is actually fairly easy to disassemble. What's interesting is the first step we're going to do is actually to take out the recoil spring. So if I bring this back here, you'll see we have the neural end of the recoil spring guide. Push that in and rotate it and unlock it. That allows us to remove the recoil spring. So that takes the tension off of everything else inside the gun. Now we can take, this is an interesting setup where there is a spring-loaded carry handle. There is an upper assembly here with the barrel and the action, and then we have this lower chassis assembly as well. So to separate those two, I'm going to push this button up and then pull this plunger forward. So that goes up, plunger comes out, and then this just lifts right out of that assembly. And that's the, the first big chunk of your field stripping. So in here, we have not a whole lot going on, actually. We have our, our firing assembly. This is just a dropping sear. So when I have the safety disengaged, oops, there we go. You can see when I pull the trigger, it just drops a sear. This is full auto only. There's no semi-auto to it. And then the rear lug right there, is what connects the, the pistol grip to the bolt. So this is a design that uses the pistol grip to charge the bolt. And that this lever here on the side allows me to disconnect the grip from the bolt so that I can slide this forward, grab the bolt, and pull it back into position to fire. Now, inside here, we have our operating rod. We have a gas block right here. This is a gas-operated gun and I can pull out the operating rod with the bolt assembly, and then the bolt is just going to come right off like that. This is, while the, the feed system is fairly reminiscent of the RPD, the bolt assembly here and the actual operating mechanism is pretty similar to the Bren gun. So what we have is a bolt where the, the back end of the bolt is going to travel up like that to lock, and there's a pair of recesses in the receiver. In fact, you can see this is the slot where this locking lug travels. So when it's in the upward, which is actually downward in this angle, when it's in that position, it's locked. And the way that it actually fires is that you have a firing pin that's very short. It's just that long, and it protrudes out the back here. So as soon as the bolt, as the, as the, the uh, operating rod goes forward, it's going to lift the locking lugs up. That locks the bolt, and then this lug right here hits the firing pin, which protrudes out the front of the bolt face, and fires the gun. So it is an open bolt uh, machine gun. And then gas pushes on this. This is locked in place, but the gas piston goes backward, which drops the rear lugs, unlocks the system, and then the whole thing can travel uh, to cycle. There's a lot of meat in here, a lot, of, a lot of metal, a lot of machining. This would have been an expensive gun to make. Um, and According to the, the Finns that I've talked to, these guns actually, uh, they're good to shoot, but they're not totally reliable. So when they malfunction, they can be a real pain to try and fix. But as long as they're running well, they work pretty well. Um, 
I was actually quite surprised, having not looked it up before I came here and, and did a little bit of shooting with this. It's got a very fast rate of fire. Uh, you'll see that when I shoot it. It kind of takes me by surprise. Um, let's see, what else do we have? The front end, the, the muzzle brake, or the flash hider and uh, front sight assembly is, is very similar to that of the Valmat, the RK62 AK, which is just interesting. It's not a style you see very many other places. And we do have a couple of dust covers back here. So there's a dust cover for the entry side. There's also a little dust cover for the exit side. So in theory, you should be able to seal this up pretty well. How, how effective those were in practice, I'm not really sure. Uh, a lot of the, these things stayed in service for a long time. And so they, in, in some ways, they're like the M60 in that way, that they kind of got a bad reputation because the guys who have used them most recently Use guns that have been in service for many decades and are fairly worn uh, and may not, may not work all that well. Ultimately, uh, it's, it's interesting to keep in mind that the Finns have still used the 7.62x39 caliber, or 7.62x39mm cartridge. So when they replaced this, they did not replace it with the FN Mini-Me, which is what pretty much everybody else uses. Instead, they actually got away from the 39mm cartridge entirely for the, the light machine gun, and instead went to the PKM in 7.62x54 rimmed. You can't go wrong with the PKM. And that's what they use today, is RK6, RK95 modern AKs and PKMs. Let me go ahead and put this back together, and then we'll do a little bit of shooting with it. That, oops, I probably ought to put the bolt in first. So we've got the bolt assembly together. We're going to flip it over runs on a couple of rails right there. You can actually see the locking lug here travels to that point, and then that is the locked position. That's unlocked. So we'll lock it in place all the way forward. And then that drops in there. And this comes forward, and then I just push the latch. That locks it back together. And then all I have to do is put the recoil spring back in. Slide that in the stock. And there we are. All right, so loading procedure for this. We're actually going to start by pulling the charging handle back. I need to have the safety off, which it is, safe, fire. Depress this. I can then push the charging, the pistol grip forward. It doubles as the charging handle. And then this metal bar in the front is there to grab. That pulls the bolt back. We'll then engage the safety. And at that point, we lift the feed cover. We're gonna put our belt in. We want it under that. The first round in the feeding position. This is a push through belt. So when you fire, it just shoves the round straight through the front unlike some of the other machine gun designs that have to extract out the back. So, with that in place, put the feed cover down, and now depress the safety and we're ready to shoot. Wow, that's fast. You want to give it a try, Carl? I'd love to. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cock the bolt, push down the lever, push it forward, pull from the metal rod back, put it on Load the belt. Make sure it's in the position. Like that. Got to get him in. Yeah, get him under that feed bar. There you go. Close it. Take it off, safe. And we should be good to go. That is a very high rate of fire. However, the rate of fire makes it pretty controllable. The staccato is very smooth. So if you wanted to suppress an area, it would work for that, but you'd run out of ammo pretty quick. Yeah. Pretty nice, actually, once it starts shooting. Yeah. <laughs> so we put it back on safe, open this, Remove the belt.
and we should be good to go for the next guy. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's very cool to be able to take a look at a gun like this KVKK-62. They're basically unheard of outside of Finland. They didn't export these. They didn't sell them. They didn't surplus them. They only exist here. So thanks to Patreon, I was able to be here in Finland to take a look at this one and bring it to you guys. If you enjoy this, do consider checking out my Patreon page. It's thanks to those folks who make it possible for me to do this. Thanks for watching.